Okay, in this video we're going to talk about uh, question number one from the 2016 Calc AB and Calc BC exams. Um, and it's basically a rate in, rate out problem, where the rate out is given to you um, kind of in table form. So this is what we know about the rate out. Um, and then we're, we're actually also told that R of T is a decreasing function, but uh, we don't actually need that for this part, so I'm going to not include it right now, and we'll bring it back in later. And then um, the rate in is given as a function. And on the calculator section, which this is, the first thing you should do when you're given a function is um, you should definitely store that on your calculator so that you can just use it. Um, and you can check it like three times when you store it and not worry about typing it in incorrectly over and over again. So store that on your calculator. And uh, let's do part A. So part A is to approximate, uh, well, actually to estimate r prime of 2. Um, so it's not the exact value, so uh, we're going to use approximately equal to, and then we're just going to use um, the slope of the secant line. So 2 is in between 1 and 3, so we'll go r of 3 minus r of 1 over 3 minus 1, um, and then we will pull those values from the table. So um, r of 3 is 950 minus r of 1 is um, 1190, and then divided by 2. And so that gives us uh, negative 120. And then we need to include the uh, units. So if you look at the units, the units in the numerator are liters per hour. And in the denominator, it's hours. So it's liters per hour per hour, which is liters per hour squared. And that's part A. So let's move on to uh, part B. So in part B, we're going to use a left Riemann sum with four intervals to approximate the... Um, to estimate, again, they're using the word estimate instead of approximate this year, um, to estimate the total amount of water removed from the tank during the eight hours. Um, and then in this particular problem, uh, it is going to be relevant that R of T is decreasing because we also have to state whether we got an over or underestimate. Um, so we're going to hold off on the decreasing part and let's do the approximation or the estimate. So I like to start off by writing the integral. Um, so the integral from zero to eight of R of T dt. And then it's an estimate, so it's approximately equal to. And then a left Riemann sum. So uh, what I like to do is I like to make it really clear in the table what I'm doing. So uh, from 0 to 1 is 1. And then the left endpoint of that would be 1340. So 1 times 1340 plus 1 to 3 is 2. And then we're going to use 1190. And then 3 to 6 is 3. And use 950. And then 6 to 8 is 2 and we'll use 740. So we get this. Um, if you think about it, you integrated liters per hour over hours, right, which would give you liters. So generally speaking, you can kind of just leave this and put liters. Uh, but I read the next part of the question. I'm going to actually need my answer to that. So I'm going to go ahead and add all that up. So uh, from 0 to 8, R of T dt is approximately 8050, and then it's in liters. Okay, so then the question says, is this an over or an underestimate? Well, they went out of their way to tell us that R of T is decreasing, and for decreasing functions, a left Riemann sum will always give you an overestimate, so uh, that's what I'm going to say. So, since R of T is decreasing, a left Riemann sum, on the real exam I would spell out Riemann sum, but whatever, gives an overestimate, and that's really all you need to do for that. Okay, so let's take a look at part C. So part C says uh, we're going to use our answer from part B to find an estimate of the total amount of water in the tank to the nearest liter at the end of eight hours. So this is kind of an accumulation function thing. We also need to know how much we started with, which they do tell us in the problem. So they tell us that T of zero, well, they say at T equals zero, there are 50,000 liters. Um, I usually put a comma when I write 50,000 because... I have a, a lot of trouble counting zeros in numbers. I know that's kind of a weird thing. Um, so you could definitely do that. In fact, when I originally wrote this up, I made a mistake and only used uh, 5,000 at some point and got a weird answer. And it's like, that doesn't make sense. But anyway, 50,000 liters. So just be careful if you have the same problems I have. So uh, the total amount is going to be the amount you start with, which is 50,000, plus um, the integral of rate in minus rate out. So rate in is uh, rate in is w of t and rate out is r of t so rate in minus rate out and then dt and then here's where the answer to part b comes in so 
it's going to be 50,000 plus. I'm breaking this into two integrals. Um, so it's w of t from 0 to 8 minus r of t from 0 to 8. But r of t we already estimated in the previous part to be um, 80, 50. So we got that from part b. And now it's totally a calculator thing. So uh, I used my calculator and it told me to the nearest gallon, 49,786. So they lost a little bit. And then that, or sorry, to the nearest liter. And that'll be in liters. Okay, and uh, that's all we have to do in that part, so let's move on to part C, uh, D, rather. Um, so for part D, uh, there is there a time t at which the rate in and the rate out are equal to each other? So we have to explain that. So my favorite way to do a problem like this is to define a new function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let f of t equal w of t minus r of t. So this is kind of an intermediate value problem, um, intermediate value theorem problem. And I like those, and I solve them the same way every time. So let f of t equal w of t minus r of t. I'm going to state that f of t is continuous, otherwise the intermediate value theorem doesn't need to apply. It's continuous because it's a difference of continuous functions, so it makes sense. Um, now I'm just going to find the values at the endpoint. So f of 0 should be w of 0 minus r of 0. r of 0 from the table is 1340. Um, the calculator tells me that's 660, although you could actually do that one by hand, but why bother? Um, and 660 is greater than 0. That's going to be relevant. And then f of 8 is w of 8 minus r of 8, which is uh, 700. And the calculator tells me that's a negative value. And so now I just make my argument. So um, since f of t is continuous, and now I found an interval with a sign change, f of 8 is less than 0 is less than f of 0. Um, so f of t must equal 0 for some t between 0 and 8, um, and that's going to be by IVT. So you probably want to state by IVT in this particular case. Um, and here's kind of the, the magical way that this tells you W of t equals R of t. So if F of t equals 0, that means W of t minus R of t equals 0, because that is F of t. Um, and then if that's true, then W of t must equal R of t for some t. So we solved it. All right, so that's question number one. Uh, part D, I guess, was a little different from usual. It's actually been on the exam before. I can't think of exactly where. Um, but this is a good example. You're going to want to study this one. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and good luck.